Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, God Talked with Hannah, Dr. McLuhan shares how Hannah trusted God to give her a son. Her son, Samuel, taught his generation to hear the voice of God. Standing on the summit of the Mount of Olives on a clear day, one can see the memorial tomb of Prophet Samuel at Mizpah. It is a moving place to visit. Muslims, Jewish people, and followers of Jesus regularly visit the site. On the roof, there is a terrace on the building overlooking the ancient city of Ramah, where Samuel was born. The tomb is a monument to the powerful prophetic words that Samuel gave and the fervent prayers of his mother, Hannah. The Quran does not mention Hannah or Samuel by name. Islamic scholars teach that the woman of Imran in the third chapter of the Quran is Hannah, the wife of Aram. The prophet who spoke to Saul and David is understood to be Shamil, the Arabic word for Samuel. In the Bible, there are over 140 references to Samuel. Hannah is honored for believing God and waiting many years for her prayers to be answered. The book of Samuel begins with the genealogy of Elkaniah, the father of Samuel. And we learn that Elkaniah was a direct descendant of Levi. That means that Elkaniah and his yet-to-be-born son Samuel were expected to serve as priests. Samuel is highly praised in Jeremiah chapter 15 and in Psalm 99. One of the greatest comments made on the life of Samuel is found in is the book itself. The Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. All of Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. Samuel served the Lord in ways far beyond his mother could have imagined. Samuel became a priest, a judge, a prophet, a military leader, and a seer. Prophets received words from God and gave them to the people. Seers received visual messages, pictures, like a moving vision. And seers turned these images into words to give to the people. In addition to all of this, Samuel was a husband and a father. What a rich life Samuel lived. Now, how did all this come about? The Bible says that Elkaniah had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other Paniah. Paniah had children, but Hannah did not because the Lord had closed her womb. The Bible is clear that conception is in the power of God's hands. We learn that every year Elkaniah went to Shiloh, where the tabernacle was pitched, to worship the Lord and to offer sacrifices. Shiloh was about 15 miles away from Ramah, where Elkaniah and his family lived. And when Elkaniah's turn came to officiate as a priest, he would give portions of the meat offering to Paniah and her children. But he loved Hannah so much that he gave her a double portion. Sadly, we learn that Paniah made fun of Hannah because she did not have children. And tensions between them became so high, when the family went to Shiloh, Hannah would cry and not eat. But Elkaniah tried to comfort her with these words, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart so sad? And am I not worth more to you than ten sons? And ten is always the number of completion and fullness, and he said, aren't I full enough for you? <laughs> and obviously, if you've yearned for a child, you know that a husband's wonderful, but he's not a son. So these words were not able to lift Hannah, because this is what the Bible says, she was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord, for Samuel chapter 1 and verse 10. Now it's clear that in her agony, Anna heard the Lord speaking to her, and he gave her the words to pray as he listened to the cry of her heart. Have you ever discovered that when you are in deep agony, the Spirit of God tells you how to pray? He reveals to you what it is that you should say. 
And Hannah responded to the leading of the Holy Spirit, and he offered to God her firstborn son as a Nazarite back to the Lord. The Nazarites uh, keep a higher standard of their dietary behavior or their purification process, and they are especially separated and dedicated to the Lord, to prayer and to worship. And so Hannah was so caught up in her prayer that the old priest thought that she was drunk because he saw her lips moving, but no words were coming out of her mouth. And he said to her, how long will you go on being drunk and put your wine away from you? But Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I'm a woman troubled in spirit. I've drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 14. I believe there's some people in the room understand that clearly. And Eli recognized his mistake. And pastors do make mistakes. He felt the burden of Hannah's heart. And the Lord in that moment gave him a prophetic word to encourage her. And he blessed her by saying, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. For Samuel chapter 1 and verse 17. The word that Eli gave her created a shift in her spirit. I mean, you had a word, and in that word, something happened. You were lifted. She felt the presence of the Lord. And the hope that she needed to keep trusting the Lord came into her spirit by this word from Eli. And so she said, let your servant find favor. Uh, Let her, your servant, referring to herself, find favor in your eyes, Eli. And Hannah went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. You ever see what a countenance change in a person? Say, oh, wow, what happened to you? (laughs) You've had a shift. You've had a change. And it's manifest when God brings a change in our shift into our lives. And my prayer is that something that you hear in this message will lift you in a way that Hannah was lifted on that day. I assure you that God sees your heart, and he's working at this very moment to answer the prayers, the requests that you have made to him. Let me ask you the question, how long do you think Hannah waited for Samuel to be born? Well, it's worth noting that Sarah waited 25 years for Isaac. Rebecca waited 30 years for her twins to be born. A Jewish tradition tells us that if a wife had been barren for 10 years, it was expected that her husband should take a second wife. Could be the case in this one. Scholars suggest that Hannah waited as long as 19 years for Samuel to be conceived. Now, while we don't know how long she waited, we do know when Samuel arrived. It's in the scripture. For Samuel chapter 1 says... In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. For Samuel chapter 1 and verse 20. Now, heaven runs on what the Bible calls due time or in due season. And we read about this in Galatians. Let us not grow weary In doing well, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It's too soon to give up. Just want to say that. You were thinking about giving up. Come on, Pastor, say it with me. It's too soon to give up. It's too soon to quit. (laughs) Oh, yes. Hannah's story, bravery and trust, teaches us so much about God's timing. Most people can relate to wanting something that they don't have. At some point in your life, you may have had a strong desire for something somebody else had. Most people have experienced the feeling of despair that comes from an unfulfilled dream. Worse than that, sometimes you're around people who criticize you or make you feel that the situation you're in is your fault. Somehow you've sinned or somehow you've done something wrong and God is against you. You might be dealing with feelings of inadequacy. And maybe like Hannah, you're in deep anguish. Do what Hannah did. 
take your anguish to the Lord. God knows how to show up in season and do much more than we hoped he would ever do. (laughs) Hannah experienced the overflowing, lavish goodness of God in her life. God gave her a son, the son of her dreams, and kept her word and gave him back to the Lord. Now, after weaning him, typically in that culture, three years, she came back to the tabernacle to present him to Eli. Now, Hannah went annually to Shiloh to visit Samuel and take him a new tunic to wear. I'm sure you could feel that mother excitement rising up in her. I'll get to see my son. <laughs> and before long, or before they left, Eli blessed them with these words. Blessed Elkanai and his wife and said, May the Lord give you children by the woman for the petition that she asked for the Lord. And so they returned to their home. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 20. And following Eli's, Eli's blessing, Hannah and Elkaniah had more sons and two daughters. What a blessing. Uh, now, it might be natural for us to ask, why did Hannah have to go through so much before she gave birth to Samuel. When Jesus was asked this question, he said that it is through our sufferings that glory is brought to God. God was glorified through Hannah's agony, and yet she never gave up on her dream to have a son. Every person that has a desire that cannot be satisfied or circumstances that are causing grief, we encourage you to believe God that he will bring glory to himself through what you are facing. So Hannah's life demonstrates that God knows our story. He knows it from the beginning to the end, and he has a plan for us. Everything has a purpose. Trusting God is always rewarded. Uh, Hannah wrote a beautiful poem about what the Lord said to her and how he helped her wait for her son to arrive. She wrote these words, just a selections from this text in Samuel. My heart exalts in the Lord. The horn is exalted in the Lord. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you. The Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The Lord makes poor and makes the rich. He brings low, and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones. The Lord will give strength to his king and exalt his anointed. Selections out of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Now, Pastor Margaret and I have had the blessing of praying for at least 10 couples from America to Europe, from Africa to Asia, seeking to have children. And we've had the joy of holding in our arms those who Satan did his best to keep from coming into this world. You have an enemy that doesn't want you to raise up a great man or woman of God. These precious children are saving arrows in the kingdom of God. If you are married and God has put it in your heart to have a child, we pray now that God will do what he did for Hannah, couples that we have prayed for as well. We command your reproductive system to cooperate with the way of God and the will of God. And we call forth from your marriage children for the kingdom of God. We pray that God gives you a sign today that your prayers have been heard. You might feel a shift in your body, and it's a sign from heaven that God is at work. Feel the lift in your spirit that Hannah experienced. Now the Bible says, now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature, in favor with the Lord, and in favor with man. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 26. What a prophetic foreshadowing of the life of Jesus. In the description of Samuel's growth, we see the picture, a picture of the early years of Jesus, 
Dr. Luke wrote, Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God, and in favor with man. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. We pray for the children of everyone watching this message. May your children go physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. Samuel is listed amongst the great men and women of God that are found in the chapter of faith, Hebrews chapter 11. They all place their faith in the coming Messiah who would save them. And today, Hannah invites you to place your faith in what Jesus did for you on the cross. Jesus said of himself, the son of man, this is a direct term from prophet Ezekiel, the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Through believing in what Jesus did for you on the cross, you can have a close relationship with God. Like Hannah and Samuel, you can hear the voice of God speaking to you. Instead of being drunk with wine, you can be filled with the Spirit of God. Ask God to open your eyes and your heart to see what Jesus did for you on the cross. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me in my place on the cross. I accept you as my Savior. If you just felt the presence of Jesus coming upon you, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Father, we thank you that you hear our earnest prayers and you know the deepest desires of our hearts. You do not be, you're not offended when we pour our hearts out to you, Father, but you hear our prayer. You give us faith to trust you to overcome the obstacles that are in front of us. Today we pray a blessing on our families and that they will all follow in the way of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.